Hi there and welcome back. Today I have another video tutorial for you and this time we're going back to the town and painting up a strike team from the combat patrol box. Last time I painted up a few of the stealth battle suits and that helped me decide on the colour scheme and accent colour that I wanted to go with with the army. So now all that was left to be done was to decide on what basing scheme I wanted to go with. So I was having a little bit of a lazy Sunday just assembling the models and getting them ready to be painted and trying to think of what I wanted to do for the base. And even though I really like the dark smoky tone of the armour, I wanted to do something really vivid on the base so that the model would really stand out on the table. And I had this idea in my head of the kind of models moving through this kind of dark black landscape with some really bright vivid magenta crystal. And I knew this might be a little bit of a risk as it's a really stark contrast between the kind of armour colour and the highlight colour of the yellow. So I decided just to go on eBay and have a look and see what I could find. And I saw these really nice crystal resin bases and they really weren't too expensive. So I thought, screw it, let's do it and got them ordered up. I also wanted to switch it up a little bit and put the airbrush away and break out the dry brushes. And I wanted to show that the dry brushing and the weathering pigment can achieve just as good an effect as using an airbrush. As I know, not everyone has or uses an airbrush. So now that we have the color scheme, the technique and the basing set, it's time to get into the painting. So once the model's all assembled and base coated, it's now ready to be painted. And we're going to be using the same three colours that we airbrushed on with the stealth battle suits, only this time we're going to be using the dry brush. I'll be using Skaven Blight Dinge, the Fang and Fenrisian Grey. Starting off with the Skaven Blight Dinge and then working our way up, getting progressively lighter as we go. The first dry brush with Skaven Blight Dinge is actually more of a overbrush rather than a dry brush as I will be leaving a fair amount of the paint still on the brush as we really want to hit about 90 to 95% of all the model and kind of take it away from being black and bring it into being grey. And we just want to make sure we get a nice even coverage over the entire model, just leaving the deepest recesses in the black primer. And during the process, I'll be switching up the size of the dry brush that I'm using, starting off with a larger dry brush and then moving down to a smaller one to get into some of the tighter areas on the model. The next highlight layer is a dry brush of the fang and as I said at each progressive layer of dry brushing we're going to be brushing softer with less paint and at more specific targeted areas. For this layer we want to be making sure we hit all of the top surfaces and hitting all of the armour parts including the helmet, the backpack and the gun. And it honestly doesn't matter how messy you are at this stage, 
as long as you're really hitting all of the kind of raised areas and making sure that you're leaving some of the previous layer left behind, it's all going to work out fine in the end. As once we use the weathering pigment, it's going to blend everything in anyway. The final highlight layer is of Citadel Fenrisian Grey and just want to make sure that you get the majority of the paint off of the brush for this highlight as it's going to be the lightest of the three. And we just want to go in and lightly brush over all of the top points of any of the armour plating, the shoulder pad, the helmet, the gun and the backpack also. And this should give a nice edge highlight to all of the raised areas on the model. Next up, I'm going to be using Vallejo Oily Steel and I'm going to be using this to paint in all of the parts of the model on the box art that are black. And that's really the non-armour plated parts of the model. And that's mainly both of the legs and the right arm which has the smaller shoulder pad on it and leaving the rest of the model with the dry brush highlight. And you should only need to apply one coat of this. And to be honest, you don't even have to be too neat as long as you get it in the general area. It'll be fine as well because of the weathering pigment that we'll be applying later. I also applied this to a few select areas on the backpack and also the barrel of the gun. Next up, we're going to be using any white to block in any of the areas that we want to be in our accent color. I use this here to paint in all of the kind of circular armor parts, the antenna on the helmet, the front of the visor, and also I painted in a few of the bits on the back of the backpack as well. 
I only applied one coat of this, but depending on the white you use, you may require two coats. Just make sure you get a nice even coverage and a nice smooth white across any of these areas. Next up, I'm going to be applying the Mr. Weathering Black Pigment. And remember, if you don't have this product, all it is really is pre-thinned down oil paint. So you can just use your own oil paint and thinner to make your own mix up here. It'll be exactly the same thing. And because this is already pre-thinned, I'm just going to be applying it straight up out of the bottle and you just want to apply a liberal coat over the entire model, making sure you cover all areas and letting the weathering pigment or oil paint run into all of the recesses. And this is going to help tone down and darken all of the harsh recesses from the previous dry brushing steps. And once the model is fully coated, it's now time to go in with the solvent and to remove all of the excess weathering pigment. And all I'm really doing here is I'm dipping my brush into the solvent and then I'm just wiping away any of the weathering pigment from any of the raised highlight areas on the model. And then I'm just going to my paper towel and wiping the excess off and then kind of going back in and making sure that we remove as much of the pigment as we can from any of the highlight regions. And just continue to do this around the model until you're happy that you've kind of uncovered all of the highlight areas and leaving in all of the recess areas in the dark weathering pigment. And this is really going to help tie in all of the previous dry brush highlights that we did that were a little bit rough in a lot of areas and it's going to smooth all of that out and give us a nice beautiful transition from the dark weathering pigment all the way through the blue and the grey into all the highlight areas. And the final step for painting in the model is to paint in all of the accent colours that we painted in white previously. I really liked the yellow from the previous video and I was in my local hobby shop recently so I decided to pick up some Army Painter Speed Paint yellow and I went for Zealot yellow which looks suspiciously red in the bottle. However, when you do apply it, it is a really nice yellow which has a kind of nice uh, orange shade to it as well that kind of flows into all of the recesses. 
So I decided to go for this and paint it in all of the accent areas. And of course the accent colour you choose here is really up to you. There are a lot of nice kind of speed paint options you could use here that would make a really nice vibrant looking army. And if you want to check out my previous video on the stealth battle suit, you can see a couple of the other colours that I tested out as well. And after that, the model is ready to be based. And as I mentioned with the bases, I had ordered them on eBay previously, so I did have to wait about a week for them to arrive. But when they did, it was certainly worth it, as they were really nice prints and they were exactly what I was looking for. So I got straight to cleaning them up and got them all primed black. I then went in with a quick airbrush with some white ink and just applied that to the entire surface area of all of the crystals and some of the areas around the base of the crystals as well. Next up it was time to add some colour to the base and as I mentioned before I wanted to pick a really vibrant colour that was going to contrast the model and I ended up going for Vallejo Game Air Warlord Purple. And this has to be one of the most vibrant non-fluorescent colours I've ever seen and it was absolutely perfect for the job. And all I did was airbrush this on to all of the white areas on the base. And it immediately does the job of providing the contrast and vibrancy that was needed. And the last step for painting the base is to edge highlight all of the crystals. This can be a bit of a pain to have to do, but to be honest, it's going to give you a much nicer result. So I would go ahead and just get it done. And I'm going to be using Vallejo Game Air Squid Pink. And I'm just going to apply an edge highlight to as many of the edges of the crystal as I can. And just use a small fine brush for this if you can and make sure you are wicking off any excess paint before going in to apply the edge highlight and try and apply a little bit more focus to the tops of the crystals as well. And once you finish that painful process of edge highlighting all of the crystals, the model and the base are now complete and I am really happy with the way they've turned out. The contrast provided by the base really makes the model stand out and I'm really looking forward to painting up the rest of the combat control in this style. So if you liked this video and found it useful and you want to see more non-paywalled video tutorials then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I spend a lot of my free time painting and making these videos for you and really enjoy doing so and don't ask for anything in return. But I'd really appreciate it if you could do me a solid and if you're not going to subscribe, at least give me a thumbs up. Next up, I plan to either tackle the big battle suit from the Combat Patrol box or one or two of the heroes in that box. And I also have a Commander Farsight model as well, which I'm really looking forward to painting up. I think it's going to look pretty damn good with this colour scheme. So I may end up doing that first. But if there is another Tau model that you want to see in this colour scheme, then let me know down below in the comments. And I'll see what I can do. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.